Hey there, it's Tim Holtz, and today's epic video is all about using these cool hipster stamps from Stampers Anonymous and the coordinating dies from Sizzix. So when we work with these, we start out with, of course, the stamps. And it's important to remember that the dies from Sizzix specifically match these stamps from Stampers Anonymous. It is the cling mounted set. It is set number 288. And that's really important because this set contains all five of the hipsters and some cool words, but it's important that you remember it is this rubber set. And this rubber set, of course, we want to start out by stamping in a permanent ink. And you can go ahead and choose whatever type of cardstock you want to work with. I'm working with Distress Watercolor cardstock, and I've just gone ahead and stamped my hipster images three times on this cardstock. Now, it's important that we stamp the images three times because we're going to layer them with the Sizzix dies. One is going to be a base, one will be for the head, and the other will be for the detailed features. Now, when it comes to die cutting out these hipsters, you can work with whatever die cut machine you're comfortable with. Of course, I'm going to be working with my Vagabond 2. Of course, you can work with uh, the original Vagabond if you have that, or Sizzix Big Shot. And what you're going to need is to make sure that you have a platform, you're also going to need a thin die adapter. Now these are framelits, so you don't need any precision base plate. You just need those two pieces. And of course, you'll need your set of cutting pads. And that's all you're going to need to work with these framelit dies. So to get started, we're just gonna go ahead and open up the Vagabond. Always love seeing that, never tire of that. And I'm just going to go in and place down my platform and my thin die adapter that just sits there on the base. And then we're going to have one of the cutting pads that's going to sit on the bottom. That's what we're going to cut into. And then we'll have our other cutting pad to layer on top. Now, what I love about these hipster framelits is that they're sold individually. So you can buy the die set for your favorite hipster. And of course, I store mine on magnetic sheets. And the cool thing about these framelits, you can see that there's the base, the head, and any of the accessories. And so I'm just going to take my sheet that I've stamped my images. Now you can go ahead and use it in its entirety, or you can cut it apart if that's easier for you. I'm just gonna use it just like this because I can place my dies directly on there. I'm gonna show you a couple of ways. Of course, when we use the framelits, that's the opening. We wanna make sure that the die is facing down onto the paper, that's the raised area. And the thing about my specific framelits with Sizzix is they're designed to really cut right up to the edge of the stamped image. They don't normally leave a halo, except on these hipsters because they have kind of that faded base on the bottom. Each die has kind of this random jaggedy edge that goes all along the bottom. And you can kind of see that. Uh, it's very unique and I think it adds to the cool hip look of these designs. So once you place that down, you're just gonna line up the framelit right along the edge of the image and use whatever type of tape. I like to work with just a very light tack, repositionable tape to just secure my framelit to the image. You can use washi tape or whatever you're comfortable doing. And here I'm just gonna place that down and we're going to make a cut. Now you can cut multiple images and I'll show you that later in the video, but for now I'm just gonna show you one at a time. So I'm just gonna place my top cutting pad, set the switch in the direction I want, press down on the button of the Vagabond and just let that go through. And that's just going to go in and make its cut. Again, when we're working with the framelits, we don't need to worry about uh, any other plates other than what comes with the Vagabond 2, which is nice. Then you're just going to remove the image and it just pops right out and you can see that cool detail right up to the edge, that cool jaggedy bottom that we have. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and layer this. So this is our base, our foundation piece for our first hipster. Next, we're just going to take off the die and you could reuse the tape just by peeling it off, use it again and you're going to take your next die and you're going to place it down. Now, for this one, we're just gonna go ahead and use the face or the head. And again, you can choose whichever image you want. Same thing, we just line it up, kind of look at your image and see which is going to be your best kind of mark. And there's, each image has its own little kind of quirky thing that you can check out and really helps kind of aligning these, I think. We're gonna tape that down into place, take our cutting pad once again, place that down, and we're going to run it through. Now, like I said, uh, for some of the other ones, I'll show you how we can take the dies and we can place them on multiple images and we can run them through all at the same time. But just for this video, I wanted to share on the first time around one at a time. So there is our head. That's the piece that's going to get layered onto the base. So we've got that and that. Pretty cool how we can start creating that dimensional layered effect. 
That's what I love about just really the detail of this and no more of that fussy cutting. Now, when it comes to the designs, a lot of people ask, you know, how is it decided uh, which dies and stamps kind of coordinate together? Well, the stamps, of course, are Stampers Anonymous. The dies are Sizzix. So it's really up to Sizzix uh, which dies they choose to do for which stamp sets. So I'm really glad they did these for the hipsters. So next, we're going to do the detail elements, and that's going to be the glasses. And for this chimp, we're going to do the vest. So there again, we're just gonna place it down. Now I can use two dies over the same image as long as the dies don't overlap or touch. So that's really, really important that if you have plenty of space, there's nothing wrong with using two of the dies over the image as long as they're not touching or overlapping. And there again, you just kind of look right through the die. The nice thing about the opening is you can see where the image is underneath. You're just gonna place that down, just kind of use your best guess. And you don't always have to cut out the layers if you don't want to, but it's really fun just to see uh, the detail that these dies really create. There again, we're just going to put our top cutting pad on and we're going to run that through. So pretty much when I do this, I always leave those bottom three, you know, my platform, my thin die adapter and the cutting pad there and just worry about the top layers. And you can see I'm always just moving it to the next side of my machine so I don't even have to worry about switching directions. So I'm going to peel this off. You're going to see, I just like that opening. Like, look how cool that opening is just to the chimp. I did this and I'm like, that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll put some mirror or something behind him. He's cool just like that. But what we have is we have the two pieces of his vest. And that's just something, again, that we can layer. And then these dies cut out the glasses. And that's really what I think is so cool about the hipster because uh, it actually cuts out the opening, just those really thin detail of the glasses. So you have the glasses that you can layer, you can fill them with glossy accents, or uh, you can make them into sunglasses or anything. And then you even have kind of the weird little eye pieces uh, that it cuts out. So I'm sure you can get really kind of crazy and random and just take those and mix and match the eye pieces in with the other hipsters. So that's really what the dies cut out for each hipster. The base, the face, and then of course your detailed elements. So when it comes to layering, you really have several options. Of course, you don't have to use all the pieces of your dies, but we've got several options as far as how dimensional we want. We can use either 3D foam squares or you can use a liquid adhesive depending on, again, how 3D or dimensional you want. I love the 3D foam squares from Scrapbook Adhesive. Uh, they're really simple to use. I like that uh, it's got a black core and you just peel them off. You just peel them off the back and stick them down and you can use as many as you want, of course. Now, depending on how structurally sound you want them to be, you can also just take your tonic. I love the the little mini snips, the fact that they're non-stick, really easy to cut, even double stick foam tape, and just slice those squares in half, again, just to kind of give you uh, whatever kind of stability you need for that. I also love how easy the backing peels off. A lot of times I really struggle with foam tape and the backing, but I find with these 3D foam squares from Scrapbook Adhesive, pretty simple. So all you're gonna do is stack that right on top and just place it down, and you can see just like that, boom. Look how cool that is, just a 3D layer. Now, of course, I would have already colored my image uh, using my colored pencils or markers or anything, but for just the sake of the video, I just wanted to show how to stamp and layer them. So for the smaller pieces, again, I'm just gonna go in with that square and just cut that down. And many people do their own cards different ways. I'm not um, really that concerned of every little tiny aspect of the die cut pieces. So you can see for the vest, I just put that foam on the large area. I don't really worry about the small piece that much because it's not gonna be crushed or anything in the envelope. Again, just place that down. And if you didn't wanna layer up the vest, you didn't have to, but I just thought just having these different elements for each of these hipsters really adds to some character. So there's just the little dimensional aspect of his vest, pretty cool. So now we get into the glasses. Now, you're going to have to decide when you go to use these glasses uh, if you even want to use them at all because they are very small. I'm not going to lie. They're very, very thin. Uh, but this is how I choose to do it. Again, I like to go in and just take a very, very thin little slice of foam square. Some people think I'm crazy for doing this. But then I'll just go in and just snip off a tiny little nugget of foam. That's really all it is. You see it? Just sticks there. Now, of course, with it being that small, it's quite a challenge to get it to actually stick to the die cut and not my fingers, but it's worth it. So I just kind of place it down, just kind of press it to where it sticks there, and then I try to find the backing of it. Believe it or not, I mean, these are sticky enough that once it sticks, you'll be able to pull out that little backing. There it is. 
flick that off, and I just have that nugget of foam right there. I don't try to outline the whole thing. But what I do, because I want them secure, is now I'll go with my liquid adhesive. And I love Distress Collage Medium. I love that it's in this small little uh, bottle. It's bigger than the multi-medium was. The tip of it's just a small, but I get more of the liquid. And of course, it's completely matte when it dries. So I just put a couple of dots on the corners. And this way, when I go in with the glasses, I can stick that down. It's dimensional in the middle, but then I'll take my fingers and I'll hold down both of the corners of the glasses where I have the collage medium. And remember, Distress Collage Medium pretty much has a drying time of now. So I don't have to worry about waiting for a wet adhesive, there's no shine, and now you can see that yes, the glasses are in fact dimensional, but I only had to worry about putting them in the middle. Pretty cool 3D layered hipster. So check them out. This one is watercolored with distress markers and then put into a frame. And whether you frame these guys or use them on a card, they are definitely hip. So I just wanted to share with you how we can use the rest of the dies on these hipsters. And again, by stamping the image three times, we can use a multiple dies in one pass. And this saves so much time when you're cutting out your hipsters and you're layering them. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed up the video and just share with you how the rest of the hipsters look. So have fun working with your hipsters, stamps and dies. Mm -hmm. 